So, so hi and welcome everybody to my talk about how to make the Linux kernel developers fix your kernel bug. That's a pretty broad uh, idea here, what which I'm claiming. But uh, there's a, it won't work all the of all the time. But in the end, it's the, the answer is simple. How to do that? It's just send a decent report, and most of the time that will will, will do the trick. And um, so, how does a decent report actually look like? Uh, so I, I made one up. Uh, this one is pretty decent. It's short and it has everything in it. We'll take a closer look at it in the uh, uh, during the presentation. Um, the following made up report on the other hand, that's, uh, th that isn't good. And uh, this is mo has multiple issues. And the thing is in the end, it most likely would be ignored. Yeah. And so you might now wonder now why are bug reports getting ignored here. The thing is developers are not obliged to fix each and every reported issue. That's just how it is. And um, simply because it's uh, impossible, would be impossible to make it mandatory anyway, because the kernel is made by volunteers. Uh, volunteers as in hobbyists or uh, people, uh, for, uh, developers from vendors that help voluntarily. So uh, yeah, that's why bug reports are ignored and uh, uh, developers themselves, because developers themselves and their employers uh, decide what to spend, uh, what to spend their time on. Uh, the good mental picture to have in mind here is uh, think of it like a playground that is built and maintained by a community that ensures everything is and stays safe. Just because you helped building a play structure like five days ago or five years ago, doesn't mean you're now obliged to improve it further because somebody says, hey, that could be better or there's something not work working right here. And the same is true if you uh, uh, help building this playground for your employer uh, a while ago. And so, but because maybe you're working for a different employer now and the employer isn't um, obliged to fix things either because maybe he lost interest in the playground because he can't make any more money from it maybe by selling copy for the parents that uh, uh, look over their their children while they are on, on the, on the uh, on the playground and if, if they sell, uh, stop selling copy to go yeah then there's no interest for them anymore to help with the playground uh, the good thing uh, the hence uh, the thing you should keep in mind is think of a bug report like asking for a favor a favor from a volunteer and there's even more good news uh, that sounds a bit uh, strange but the good news is those volunteers, the, the, the kernel developers, are really committed to help you with all sorts of issues. And that's why even reports with big flaws sometimes will do the trick. But the problem is uh, they can only do that if their time and motivation permits. And as you, most of you know, that's something that's limited for all of us. And uh, yeah, that becomes a problem because unfortunately, most kernel developers are really uh, buried in work. They have long to-do lists and lots of reports they have to work through. and. Uh, uh, even get more bug reports every day and uh, yeah and then the simple answer uh, is you have to kick something off, off the to-do list and then the reports of flaws are often the first thing that will be uh, ignored yeah and that's why every flaw in your report hence increases the risk that your report will be ignored that's why you should uh, uh, should avoid flaws and that's why i show you actually how to do it by submitting a decent report um the, there are five important aspects here um, that I'll cover in, in the first act of this talk because that's uh, those are the things that are uh, most important and uh, what most people get wrong here. And this is the reason why many bug reports for the Linux kernel are ignored. One of them is, for example, um, you should ensure that, that the kernel you're using to report your bug with is actually vanilla. Vanilla is, uh, means that it's built directly from the sources as distributed by kernel.org and not modified by anyone. Uh, there's a simple uh, explanation for why it should be like that because yeah, that's the code the kernel developers are working on. Some modifications obviously is not uh, what, uh, uh, what they can support. So to explain it with the playground example, let me please stretch the analogy a little bit because the playground Obviously, it's material, but the kernel is immaterial. So think of Linux more like a like a book to build a playground, and uh, with a three D printer that uh, does everything with a snap of a finger and actually even updates uh, existing parts. And uh, actually, a playground is also not really the, the proper uh, size for such an analogy. It, uh, it's think of more like a big amusement park, e even bigger than this one. This one. Um, this will. Uh, 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 because that's really complex and uh, yeah that's what Linux is these days 
So now think think of you uh, you have built a park uh, with from this book and run into trouble and you complain to a, to a friend who's one of the maintainers of that that book and he checks the instructions uh, unsuccessfully to find the root cause of the uh, of the error and after some while agrees to fly over across the continent for hours in the plane and doesn't really have time uh, but then he comes to your to your park and he immediately sees that it's not built from the book uh, he works on because uh, he used a, 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 a book that was uh, published by people who actually modified things and are known to add stuff uh, that don't match the kernel, uh, that, that don't match the quality standards those people are, uh, uh, the, the kernel developers are working on, or the, those that build this uh, Linus land park. So, yeah, and that's something you wouldn't uh, want to do to a friend, would you? And so, yeah, in the Linux, that's also the same in the Linux uh, case, and that's actually an aspect that's especially important there. As any modification and enhancement to Linux can, uh, code base can cause issues in other totally uh, unrelated kernel areas. That's why if you add a uh, out of tree driver or something like that or modify in, in one area, suddenly your memory, memory management might not work anymore. Uh, that happens actually. And uh, the problem here is that most kernels used in the wild are actually heavily modified and, and, uh, and enhanced. For example, those in uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux or SUSE Enterprise Linux or Ubuntu. And yeah, that makes them pretty uh, unsu uh, uh, that makes them unsuitable for reporting bugs to the Linux kernel developers. You have to report problems with those to your vendors, uh, to your vendor that provided you with the kernel. So actually, your, your Linux distribution distributor, as those often won't help you with problems that are not that important. Um, there's obviously something else you can do. You can install a vanilla kernel yourself in instead, uh, simply by compiling them one on your own or using a pre-built one that's uh, often uh, quite easy on, on the big distributions because there are repositories with them. So that's what you actually want to do. You want to install a vanilla kernel when you report uh, a problem to the kernel developers, to the Linux kernel developers. And uh, when you actually write your report uh, later, there's some, some important detail here. You really should focus on, on this vanilla kernel in your report. Even if you found the bug with the distribution kernel, uh, don't bring it up. It often, it most of the time just complicates the report really, really a lot. It makes it a lot harder to grasp. And yeah, that's one of the reasons why this report in the end might, might be ignored. So just ignore the distro kernel. It's not relevant for, uh, relevant to the upstream Linux kernel developers. And uh, that which brings me back to the made up reports I showed earlier, like this one that's. Uh, uh, that was the one that uh, has some bad aspects, and as you can see, if you look close at the at the ticket, at the Baxilla ticket, you can see that uh, the report is about an Ubuntu kernel. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons why this report likely would have been ignored <clears throat> if it was an actual report. The other report, the good one I showed earlier, actually, uh, immediately in the second sentence uh, makes clear, hey, I'm, I did try this on a vanilla kernel, so I, I'm using the, the code um, you work on and everybody cares about, and uh, that avoids any doubt by those that re receive the report. That was already the first uh, important uh, point uh, when it comes to writing a decent report, which brings us actually to the next, uh, to the second one already, which is actually quite close, re closely related. Um, you should really use a fresh Linux kernel here. Why? Because, yeah, that's the code the kernel developers care about. They don't care about something they, they distributed a year ago or something, because uh, since then many bugs were actually were fixed. Uh, and uh, to explain it with the, the playground uh, or the Linux land example, uh, again, say you have problems uh, again and your friend uh, uh, again has to play over. And immediately when joining, when coming to your park, sees that uh, you build a park from a, from a book that is uh, two or four years old and um, and was never updated and yeah and uh, then he is really annoyed because he flew over and yeah he nevertheless looks close and then even finds out yeah that uh, that can contain the bug that your friend actually uh, fixed himself like uh, uh, two years ago or something but he totally forgot about it because that's happened the current developers are fixing bugs and changing things all the time it's so easy to to even forget what you did four weeks ago so that's why you really need to uh, 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 ch check with the latest kernel as you don't want to do that to, uh, to your friends at the kernel developers that, that you want to help you here. Uh, so 
really test with the latest uh, code base. And so what is the, uh, it's in your uh, personal interest also, because that's the first place where all bugs are fixed. Every bug in the Linux kernel is fixed in a in the latest code base first and then backported to older and stable versions. And uh, yeah, so how to actually find the latest version you want to use for testing that's simple. Go to kernel.org and ignore the big yellow box and look up at the table that's below us. Uh, below that and uh, just uh, there's uh, the top of the table there's a mainline line that's the version you want uh, uh, want to use at least 98 uh, percent of the time because sometimes things will look like this like this then it's okay uh, to use a stable kernel then that's a case when uh, a new mainline release was first out and uh, the next one is prepared then a stable release with a higher version number is actually what you what you can use and because the other one is still in the early stages, might not be the best tested at that point. And uh, but other times, if it looks like this, that uh, uh, the next mainline release is already up to an RC seven or an RC one already, uh, you don't want to uh, use stable normally because uh, yeah, the thing is, stable kernels have no bugs that will never be fixed because yeah, sometimes it's simply too risky to backport changes because they are too complex or um, it's uh, entangled in some other changes, and uh, that's uh, that's why stable kernels sometimes have bugs that will never be fixed. And uh, uh, for stable kernels, that's not that much of a problem. That's why using a stable kernel can be okay to report bugs. It's not ideal, but uh, it works. Uh, but for long-term kernel, uh, that's really uh, something you, uh, something pretty annoying. So that becomes problematic. So you really don't want to use uh, long-term or LTS kernels um, for reporting bugs. You really want to check if the call, uh, if the issue happens in the latest uh, code base. If you don't believe me, actually, there was a famous uh, Linux kernel developer, the X4 developer, uh, Theodore So Actually, he recently uh, in a mail actually explained, yeah, he doesn't care about bugs in LDL LTS kernels, or he doesn't care if you can't even build your own kernel. Uh, those those are the bug reports that will be ignored. So don't use the long-term kernels. Hold on. There's a small exception here. If the, you have a regression within within a long-term series, say from, when switching from 5.15, 27 to 28, then it's okay, but just a special case that we'll get to back later. So. And just like in the uh, in the first point I raised, uh, it's the same here. Focus on on the freshest kernel you tested in your report, because mentioning other versions, the second version, most of the time will complicate the re re report unnecessarily, unless you deal with a regression uh, where where something used to work on an earlier version. Then it's obviously fine to use it, uh, to mention a second second version. Um, but other other times, just focus uh, on the latest version you you have tested um the bad bad bug report example uh, i i uh, mentioned uh, i showed earlier for example used the 5.15 lts kernel um that by then was more than a year uh, about a year old already um and so that's one of the reasons why this bug report actually is would be ignored and the report actually tried the 5.19 kernel um so that makes the bug report already confusing. But the thing is, the latest kernel at that point in time already was a 6.0 kernel. So he, he didn't even uh, 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 check the latest version. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty bad idea. And uh, um, one of the reasons why bug reports can easily get ignored. Um, <clears throat> the good bug report I showed earlier on the other hand uh, immediately makes clear that it's uh, that the reporter use the latest RC release um, to test and doesn't mention any other kernels. So that's pretty basic, pretty straightforward, easy to understand for everyone that comes across this report. Yeah, that concludes the second important point and brings us to the third. You need to ensure your kernels and system integrity here. Why? Because yeah, something local might be causing the problem you're facing. So. Um, let's get back to the amusement park with Linus Land. Uh, say the water and roller coasters stop somewhere along the track often, and uh, you can't un I have no idea why, and your friend either. And uh, he flies again yet over and spots the mobile attractions in the corner with, of your park, which you allow to come by each and every day and uh, actually use some of the park's infrastructure. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, uh, the friend highly suspects that the workers of the mobile attraction assess the water pipes and the power grid 
in irregular ways that co are causing the, the problems you see with the roller coasters there. Uh, but he's actually not allowed to look close at the mobile attraction as the owners consider it that trade secrets. And yeah, in the end, there's nothing your friend can do about it um, because uh, the problem is not in the code or in the instructions they maintain. That's the same with the kernel. And the good thing is actually the kernel can detect a few things uh, that make it, uh, that, that bring it into a state where, where it's uh, uh, in bad to report bugs. That is actually, uh, tainting itself if there's some if something occurs that's really bad and you don't want to see in, in, uh, in, in bug reports and if um, this file in the prop file system actually contains a zero then everything is fine that's actually how it looks looks but if there's something else in it uh, for example a one or an even higher number uh, then something is wrong and you should investigate what's causing what's causing this um, the one actually is frequently caused by nvidia's own gpu drivers but the thing is uh, that um, it's uh, the same for both GPU drivers they ship these days. The license doesn't matter. The open source driver that uh, distributes is also a problem. Um, the the tape number is different, but it's a problem because, yeah, kernels with out of tree drivers are, are not vanilla anymore. And they, that makes them unsuitable for reporting bugs to the kernel developers. H hence, deinstall such, such drivers, reboot. And uh, check if the art issue is actually still present. And uh, um, um, yeah, but the thing is, those drivers are not the only reasons why your kernel might be tainted. There are many other incidents that can taint your kernel, and uh, most of them make it unsuitable for reporting bug bugs, but not all of them. The most famous one that makes that isn't a problem is actually when the first oops warning or something like that happens. Uh, so that does uh, are the screens that look like this. Um, and those cases, when that when, when it's actually the first such uh, problem that shows up, uh, that, then it's something that's okay to report. Uh, if it's a second uh, one already, then it's uh, could be a follow up error, and uh, that's already then a problem that uh, isn't worth reporting at least most of the time. I, that's actually why in the in such a, a, a stack trace, it, there's actually a, a small area where it's actually in, where the kernel actually is indicating if it, if it's tainted. But the thing is, what those uh, letters mean here and what those numbers mean, I can't explain that all here because that would take too long. Uh, if the kernel is tainted, check the docs. There's actually a reported issues document in the Linux kernel. It has a section that is dedicated to this uh, taint flag and checking it, and uh, which actually explains what you need to do and what you can make uh, can do to fix this. And it actually points you to a page, uh, a different page for the uh, script to decode the numbers and the letters, and uh, then you can see what actually is the reason why your kernel is tainted. Yeah. So in your back report, you also should make it clear that. Um, yeah, the kernel wasn't tainted. For example, in the bad bug report I showed earlier, uh, the user is actually mentioning that he's using a uh, GeForce card that actually at that point of time was only really usable by using um, uh, NVIDIA's proprietary drivers. So that's a pretty strong indicator that uh, uh, user actually uses a tainted kernel and might be uh, reason enough to get a bug report ignored already. The good report, on the other hand, actually make it clear, uh, also just by quickly mentioning it uh, at one point, uh, that the kernel was untainted, and yeah, that makes the kernel developers already quite happy. There are a few other things um, that the kernel can't detect, um, but that could con uh, could lead to trouble, and uh, that's you should detect uh, check those um, in your own interest, because yeah, maybe the bug is caught by them. For example, is your hardware still working reliably and as specified? And is your kernel environment well? You could, for example, test uh, the memory. You should stop overclocking. If you have something, of, uh, a stack trace that uh, indicates something where the file system is wrong, you want to FS check the volumes and things like that. A good indicator here, what you also should check, is um, the output from D message minus H um, and look out for everything red or bold. Um, as you can see in this picture, um, uh, there the are often uh, indicators for what might be wrong. And uh, uh, for example, if a firmware file or something is missing, and uh, also gives you uh, often will give you some error message that is um, helpful to to search on the internet with to check if if the issue was already reported or if there's a workaround. So that 
can save everyone, everybody a lot of time. So that was the third point, and which brings us to the next one, which actually is a bit quite a sad state because there's things are really unnecessarily complicated. Um, you need to check where you need to re, uh, submit your report to because uh, there's no single place you have to check what's the right place um, because developers can't have their eyes everywhere. So the, I'm overly scratch, stretching the analogy here. Um, just it's, assume you, you're reporting a problem to some web forum with, with your friend. You and your friend used to do uh, used to use uh, five years ago. Uh, um, and when you report a bug there, he doesn't react. Yeah, maybe he doesn't use that forum anymore. And yeah, that's your fault and not, not his fault if he then uh, doesn't help you. Yeah, but as I said, for Linux, finding the right place sadly is a bit hard because it uh, depends on the subsystem where you actually suspect that the issue originates. Uh, for example, if it's a graphics driver, uh, it's, uh, that's, uh, um, that's a subsystem for the uh, graphics driver. The thing is, um, um, there's this uh, uh, bugzilla.com.org, which might look like the central bug tracker, but it's actually not. That's something you really should keep in mind, which you actually also notice when you follow the link on, on the front page, because it le leads you to the reporting YouTube document I already mentioned, and uh, which actually tells you that uh, using Bugzilla is uh, most of the time a, ba a bad idea because many of the bugs files they are ignored because they are never reaching the developers that should handle them. Explaining that is a bit complicated. Uh, just believe me how it is. There's an LWN net uh, article about it that from one month ago that explains some of it. Um, yeah, but in the end, the sh so short story is most of the time it's, it's the wrong place. And uh, finding the right place is actually explained there. The, the right place is actually explained in the maintainers file of the kernel. This is actually linked there. And it has, uh, a lot of entries, more than 2,000 these days, that look like that. And uh, yeah, you can also indicate by looking at the screenshot, most of the maintainers actually um, prefer to, uh, to get um, bug reports um, by, by email. Most maintainers and subsystems do this with a mailing list in CC. And uh, as you can see in the case of the ButterFS file system, these three people, you should mail these three people and CC the uh, ButterFS mailing list if you have a problem and they should handle, handle your problem or delegate it to, to other people. Occasionally, uh, uh, um, um, the maintainers file will point you to some, some bug tracker actually because some subsystems actually use them. One of them, uh, for example, is are the maintainers for the graphics drivers for AMD, Intel chips or the Nouveau driver. Um, they actually have a GitLab instance, and uh, they those developers want you to file bugs there, uh, but that's only a very few um, uh, number of subsystems that do it. And there are actually also quite a few, uh, uh, a small number of subsystems that want you to file bugs in bugs or allow you to file bugs in bugzilla kernel.org. That's mainly ACPI, PCI, and uh, power management. And uh, then, then the maintainers file, file will point at them like this. But even there, you can email the maintainers. That's uh, totally OK. Yeah. But for other subsystems, um, you can file, file bugs in Bugzilla. But yeah, most of the time, uh, um, those bugs never reach the actual de developers. And yeah, that's in the end uh, why they they will be ignored. So that's uh, you want to avoid that because that's not what what you want. Yeah, that's actually what the made up report I showed earlier. It's it's obviously from kernel.org, a uh, kernel, uh, kernel.org, and it's actually filed against the network wireless Intel drivers. And yeah, th those um, those developers don't want um, bugs filed in bugzilla.kernel.org. Some, sometimes they see bug reports there, uh, but that also doesn't mean that they're reacting there because there's no guarantee. Yeah, um, what you should have done is uh, shown in the right example. It yeah, simply mail to the maintainers of the uh, driver in question, and that's how uh, what gets you to the best results because Linux you know, kernel development is done by email, and that's the usual interface uh, people have to deal with. Then, and, and that's actually what works. That actually brings us to the last point that's important, 
you should really depict your problem adequately because yeah developers like everybody values their time and uh, their attention span is limited also so assume your friend shows you shows you a report from from a common friend from school days that's totally confusing multiple pages long you read the subject in the first paragraph and don't get an idea what this is about the whole text is confusing full of unnecessary and distracting details has five attachments and 20 links and is also written in an unfriendly demanding or in beerish way uh, yeah if you then you would also suggest to your friend okay if you get such bug reports i would also ignore them because yeah there's so much more you can do in a day uh, if that guy isn't nice then uh, don't help him you don't have to the thing is how to write a good uh, a good report is worth its own quite long talk and um, and we'll cover just a few important things here try the one thing that's really important try to keep the depiction um, short ideally as short as possible but with all the uh, relevant details uh, the bug report I showed here the made up report actually does it it does it basically in one one and a half paragraph uh, you could say that contains every uh, all the important thing and if the problem is really that complicated that it uh, wants a more detailed description a de detailed description write it and put a tldr on top of it that sums everything up in, in one paragraph because the first paragraph of your mail is uh, the thing that uh, most people will read and uh, to decide if the rest of the mail uh, is actually worth uh, looking close at and so you really want to uh, grab the, the attention of those those readers there you should also take some time to find a good uh, descriptive su subject because that's the only thing people will read. Um, this is here again an example from the gut, uh, good bug report and uh, uh, state the things that I mentioned earlier already. So if the kernel is vanilla, it's change status, it's version. You also should mention the, the distro and when, when relevant all details, uh, details about the hardware as well. For example, this uh, made up bug report actually links to the to the report of the router in question that does work on, on the Wi-Fi uh, that actually will help the developers in this case. case. Yeah. Um, you can also, uh, 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 you should also upload and link all um, relevant uh, logs and details. You can even also attach them, but sometimes the mail, especially when it comes to emails, the mail gets long and big. So uploading a link is, is uh, that what most of the time is, uh, is, the, uh, is the thing you want to use. Uh, what's relevant depends on the situation, the outcome from the message, LSPCI uh, uh, minus NN, almost always is relevant. The current config is often too. Uh, what else is important depends on the situation. So sometimes an LSUSB, LS SCSI will be needed. But ensure not to overload the report. If something is missing, developers will ask for it if you manage to grab their attention. So how it can look, yeah, here I, I already showed that yeah, the D message and the kernel config uh, were uploaded by the user and uh, uh, develops can download there. Once you got your report uh, compiled, um, uh, um, review the subject in the first paragraph again, because getting those right is really crucial because that's the only thing um, uh, many people will look at. And uh, yeah, review the tone too. Um, because um, that's um, that's really uh, set, um, important when when you get these mails that they will us how is the tone. So think of it uh, of, of, like asking a volunteer for a, fa a favor. Volunteers that are known to be stressed and short on time, but you nevertheless uh, want to motivate them to spend their time on your behalf. So choose a tone that that makes that possible because. Uh, uh, together with the information you provided by doing your part of the job, that makes it attractive and easy for the uh, volunteers to help you. And that actually concludes the, the, the first act of this talk. And um, has, are there any questions already, Shuan? Uh, there are a couple. I am fielding them. Um, uh, they are general questions. Um, so I have been able to fill them. Okay. Um, so there is one question, though, you might be able to answer how to attract attention to the issue in a proper manner. The answer is, like always in life, it depends, uh, sadly, sorry. Um, normally, if you 
um, the, the, what you should try is um, compile a report and show it to somebody who's not involved but um, might understand what it's about and try to check if that person understands what it is about or if it's uh, um, if the report and the description of the problem is actually um, um, right because that if, if it works for that person it uh, li likely will work for the developers also and yeah the important thing here is also really mailing uh, or using the right path to to reporters because yeah most of the time it will be email and they are getting the first paragraph and the, uh, and the um, subject right and uh, the recipient so sending the mail to the right people that's really important here so if i may i can add a couple of things here um think of think of it this way that if you took your car to a, um, um, a mechanic um, and you're trying to describe a problem that's some rattle so you'll have to describe when you are seeing it what's happening you can start the car so think like a uh, you, developer that somebody else is reporting a problem to you what information you would want from uh, to be able to diagnose it so that's the one analogy I can think of a car um, the other thing you want to do in a report is uh, gather all the information that they might need dmessage uh, Thorsten already mentioned that and then configuration kernel configuration is very important um, figure out what kernel configuration. You can see it in the boot, um, slash boot usually. You'll see the configurations there. So highlight that which configuration architecture you are running on. Sometimes you could be sending a report uh, that might be a generic, but a, a generic meaning memory management or file system, but it could be arch architecture dependent, in which case it could be a ARM or um, um, Intel or AMD. So it could be dependent on the architecture. That's what I would say. Yeah. Uh, DMSH, kernel log, and all of the information that you would want. And any runtime things you might be doing at that time. Were you running um, a specific application? Um, maybe graphics driver. Are you doing a, um, uh, playing a video? Or is that triggering the problems? Starting so thinking, all of that. Game or something, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, so sorry. Um, yeah. No, that, so that that I, I really like like the car example. That's a good good explanation because you you have to somebody else that's not sitting next to you need to understand and uh, be able uh, what is this about and uh, you have to provide some hints how to find it actually. Yeah. So let me move on to the second act, that which is actually a lot shorter which is actually um, um, uh, influenced by a short interlude because yeah, are all issues equal? That brings me back to the playground example. Um, um, for example, assume something starts to rot and becomes dangerous. Is it, uh, uh, that's obviously something that needs to be handled. So uh, they are uh, ignoring the bug would actually be bad. And uh, what actually happens if somebody modifies the play structure and the kids hate it afterwards? That's, uh, those are things that are happening with the kernel also. And that's actually why the kind of issue you have also matters some, uh, uh, somewhat when you're reporting a bug. So because there are definitely issues that developers shouldn't ignore because they are obliged to address. And uh, obviously one of them, those are security vulnerabilities. I'm not going down to that because that doesn't happen every day. If you have, have one of those, check the uh, uh, documentation. There's actually a a page dedicated for it uh, that explains it. There's also devastating bugs uh, that are bad for Linux fame, like uh, uh, something really bad, like data is lost or damaged, or even hardware is bricked. And uh, those are really luckily rare, but yeah, they happen. And if you face one of those, uh, make it obvious in your report, don't delay your report, and maybe even CC Linus to make sure it gets the proper attention. Uh, because sometimes it's needed, uh, uh, he will know uh, whom to send to report to if you don't, didn't pick the right persons. Uh, then also regression. Uh, regression is actually when something breaks when updating a kernel, say from 5.15 to 5.16. Uh, that is not allowed in Linux because, because the Linux kernel has a we don't cause regressions rule. It's actually the first and maybe the only real hard rule of the Linux kernel de develop development it's uh, actually coined and enforced by Linus. He wants to take the fear out of updating. And uh, the thing is, there's some fine print involved here. Um, when it comes to this rule, you have to, uh, for example, use a kernel with a similar configuration. 
um, when updating uh, those fine, fine print is actually I also explained in the dedicated document I added to the Linux kernel documentation uh, half a year ago or something actually linked here. And uh, that's mentioning everything important you want to know if you face a regression or what you should additionally do to make sure the regression is handled appropriately. And um, more about this hopefully, hopefully in another mentorship, mentorship sessions where I'll explain that in more detail because the regression packing is actually what I'm working on. Uh, at that point, you might wonder, yeah, if developers are, ignore, uh, are allowed to ignore bugs, who handles these bugs? It's, it depends. Op often it will be the author of the code or, uh, for example, if it's a re regression and it's known what change is causing it, then the author of that change is actually uh, responsible for fixing it. But there's a fallback. The kernel, Linux kernel maintainers that take care of, uh, of those subsystems, uh, they have to step in. And if they don't do it, uh, Linux themselves will actually um, uh, take care of the bug or find somebody that will, will do this. He, he I occasionally does it. He looks really, uh, sometimes he has a bug report, he fixes himself because somebody else doesn't do it. But yeah, they can't e handle everything. And that's why there are also issues that are totally ignored or most of the time ignored, that which, for example, can happen uh, due to known deficits uh, because there are many many incomplete drivers in the kernel uh, because uh, there's no volunteer with enough time or motivation to improve things or lack of documentation or other real world issue prevents improvements to the driver. So um, yeah, that's why the Linux kernel has incomplete drivers that don't support everything the hardware offers. And that's why you want to check the internet uh, when writing a bug report uh, for, for, for known deficits because it, uh, Sending a, a wasting time on a report that won't change anything because it's a known uh, known deficits um, well, uh, is not is not worth it for you. If it, in a doubt, simply send a, uh, send a quick is this known um, uh, inquiry to the developers in question before writing a, pro a proper lengthy report. That's not not a problem. Um, besides those known deficits, there's another reason why bugs sometimes get ignored. There is code in the Linux kernel that don't doesn't have an active maintainer. Um, the code, nevertheless, because uh, uh, remains in the kernel because it's too useful for people, and removing it would um, cause a regression, so it stays unless it becomes a problem for for one reason or another. Uh, that you can see that in a maintainer's file, then if there's a status is odd fixes, uh, then it's nearly often there often. Uh, there's just somebody who keeps an eye on things and uh, sending a report in that case definitely is a good idea. Um, because with a bit of luck, that person will look into it and fix it, or at least try to help you to fix your, uh, to help yourself or something like that. Yeah. And then there's also um, um, uh, uh, code in Linux that is totally orphaned. That's also in the status line of the maintainer's file where it's explained. Uh, but even then, sending a quick, brief report uh, that outlines the problem is often worth it because maybe you find others that are affected and you can help each other to, to uh, find a solution. Or maybe one of you, of you is actually a de developer and uh, can submit a fix to actually um, uh, fix the problem. Yeah. Besides these two extremes, um, there are actually a, a wibbly wobbly area, um, uh, a big wibbly wobbly area uh, yeah, <clears throat> of other issues. And uh, yeah, what matters there is uh, simply quickly explain actually the quality of your, of your report and the most important things uh, about that we already covered. Um, but what we didn't actually do there when we covered that is explain how to actually approach the thing. And, uh, there, uh, to explain that a bit, uh, let's do a quick X3 that uh, actually explains how to ideally handle the bug report from start to finish. Um, that's actually a, um, uh, something I, uh, that's in the kernel documentation also. There's uh, this reporting issues document I mentioned a few times already. It's, it explains what you need to do step by step and actually try to uh, uh, catch local problems er early to make sure you don't waste time on co uh, compiling your own kernel and then notice, hey, I'm having a setup that uh, is not worth reporting anyway because the kernel is tainted and I need the NVIDIA driver and can't uninstall it or, or uninstall it or something like that. And uh, the step by step guide uh, actually is um, uh, companioned by a reference section that uh, explains each of the steps in more detail. Um, we can quickly do this, uh, go through this uh, list of things you do uh, during the step-by-step -step guide to give you a brief impression of what, 
uh, what you actually need to do. And the first 11 steps are actually just all preparations. Uh, the first one, for example, is just checking if you have a kernel suitable for reporting bugs or willing to install one, just to kick those users immediately out uh, that are not willing to install a, a vanilla kernel because, yeah, that's what they need to do in the end anyway. Uh, search for ex existing bugs to join. That's something that uh, you obviously need to do all the time when reporting bugs. That's not, not different for the kernel. And that's why the, the five steps in the beginning I, I focused on that didn't uh, go into that detail. And uh, what you should do there is simply using your favorite search engine to check for, for, for existing bugs and also check the uh, law.kernel.org, which hosts many mailing list archives for, for Linux kernel mailing list. Uh, there, are, there are dozens of them. And uh, try to check uh, there if some if you find a message um, uh, where your bug is described. And you can obviously also search bugzilla.kernel.org, even if many bugs are not uh, reported there. Maybe there's something uh, you find there. Or even the GitLab instance, in, in case you have a, a, have a um, uh, graphic struggle problems. Uh, as usual, when searching for existing bugs, remember to vary your search uh, terms a few times. That's really something uh, that helps a lot and some, uh, something a lot of people neglect, uh, but they make their life unnecessarily hard. Uh, the third step is actually classifying the kind of problem. We already covered that because, yeah, if you have a, a regression, uh, then you can demand that it's getting fixed, or if it's something uh, that won't be fixed in the end anyway, uh, then you will know here at this point already, which, which is in your own, own interest. You should also check your, your setup, if, it, if, uh, if your setup might be causing the problem uh, regarding the tainted stuff, we already covered that. And uh, creating a backup before fiddling with the system obviously is always a good idea. That's also why the step-by-step -step guide mentioned it. And, um, and that's actually right in front of the next step because, yeah, you need to um, um, ensure you're not using any externally developed module modules when, when reporting bugs. So you should uh, re remove any drivers that need it, like, for example, your NVIDIA driver at that point. And then restart, and then you should, for example, check again of, uh, if the kernel is tainted for the issue of yours. Yeah. Um, for reasons we already, uh, I already explained in more detail earlier already. Now it's a good time to read it, uh, write down how to reproduce the issue, and so you know it, uh, what, uh, uh, how to actually uh, check with other kernels if the issue is actually uh, happening there. And um, also uh, a good time, point to check if the regression, if, if it's actually a regression in a stable series, that's why and checking earlier if, if it's a regression is, is a good idea, because if it is, you can use a shortcut that's actually linked in the reporting issues document, because if it's a regression, you can, can report it uh, briefly, and that's often good enough, and uh, that will do the trick there. The details are in the document there. <clears throat> the 10th step is actually locating the driver subsystem uh, that seems to cause the issue using the maintainer's file, as explained earlier because you need that again to check the archives of that place for existing reports. And that's actually the last start step of the preparation. Now you're getting to the, to the part where you actually uh, do, you do the real, real work is like testing and reporting. And that starts with uh, making sure you uh, use or actually install the latest vanilla kernel ideally mainline as explained earlier. Uh, then, um, you should uh, check uh, again with this kernel the one, once you boot it is it does it taint itself because yeah maybe that kernel uh, 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 acts different in that regard and so you really should check that this at that point again because now it really matters and uh, then reproduce the issue with this kernel to check if it was fixed in between there yeah. and if it wasn't fixed in between you should now optimize the depiction of of the, of the uh, uh, issue how to re reproduce this because that serves as a, um, a basis for your re report later. And if you deal with a stack trace, you should really co consider de decoding it. That's not that important. The stack traces are those things and in an oops or warning or a kernel panic that actually shows how uh, in which line of code uh, the um, error actually happened and how it was called. Uh, but if you don't, don't decode it, things look like this with, with numbers, uh, with hex numbers, with addresses there uh, that don't, don't help that much. And uh, by decoding them, 
um, the, you get more information about it. that's nice to have, really would be good if, if you regularly reporting bugs. If you only occasionally report bugs, it's okay to say, hey, I can't decode it, but I didn't do it. And uh, 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 just offer to do it later if it's needed. Um, because yeah, that's, uh, if you're not used to these things, it's something that takes a little bit time to figure out. It's the same with the regressions. Uh, for regressions, you should actually um, specify uh, when it, when when the regression started. So to specify which version was not affected and which version was the first one where where uh, the problem actually occurred, you should narrow down this um, range as much, much as possible. Which actually means if you should use a git bisect to find the change uh, that is causing the problem. But that also is some work. So. That's also um, something you can say, hey, I have this, uh, this problem. Um, is this known? And if not, I can do a bisection. Uh, simply reporting that, uh, your, your issue like that is totally fine. But if, if the problem is not known, you need to do the bisection because uh, that's often the only way to find out. More about this, hopefully, in, in another mentorship session uh, in, uh, in a few months, maybe. And yeah, now you're actually at the point where you can compile and submit to the report as outlined earlier. But the thing is, that is not the end of, of, of the process because now you need to wait uh, for reactions and keep the ball rolling because that's uh, when the fun starts, you maybe could say. Um, because yeah, the uh, thing is, developers might ask questions or uh, want, you, uh, want you to test something to narrow down where the problem actually happens. Um, and um, you should try to um, uh, answer those questions uh, publicly in a timely manner as soon as possible, uh, because that's actually needed to, to, um, to uh, track down the problem often, because developers can't uh, check each, uh, can't reproduce each and every bug in their labs. They need your help there. And uh, um, you, uh, while doing that uh, in that phase, you also should. Keep in mind that the developers are overloaded with work and sometimes go on vacation. Hence, a report that uh, didn't get a reply within two or three weeks is likely dead and forgotten uh, already. It's certainly okay to prod it uh, there then in a uh, kind and friendly way. Uh, but when before doing so, you really should check if there was if the report you sent was really decent, and because maybe it wasn't or has some flaws, and that was the reason why it was ignored. So that's a good point to recheck that and uh, at that, uh, if you need to plot it. Also, if new kernel versions were released in between, you might want to check if the issue was actually fixed because maybe it was fixed and you were not told about the fix. It happens all the time uh, because there are so many different areas where bugs happen. Sometimes uh, uh, somebody fixes something uh, without uh, being aware of any reports about the problem. Um, retesting with new accounts is especially important if an RC1 one mainline release actually came out in between because uh, a lot of uh, changes get in there and that's uh, every time what is such an RC1 mainline release gets out, uh, you really want to check if the issue is still present there and set a quick um, uh, status update to your report and say, hey, the, uh, in the latest mainline kernel, the, the, the bug is gone or uh, still present and uh, because yeah, that will keep uh, keep the bug in in, in, in uh, present for the for the developers to make sure uh, they have it on on their to do list. And uh, yeah, also if you don't get any help or if it's unsatisfying this way, try to help yourself. The reporting issues uh, document actually has a few tips there uh, because uh, there are so many people in the Linux community. It's also also, you often to, uh, find help by help, help helping each other and not relying on, on on the on the developers too much. There, that's it. If you want to need more details on any of that, really check out this reporting issues document. Uh, it has a lot of details on all the steps if you need them. But at the same time, it's hopefully easy to read for, um, 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 because the step by step guide is really short and. Uh, helps you to avoid any problems. So it's really written in your own interest. Which brings me to the end of this talk, actually to the conclusion. So let's sum things up a little bit. Um, the most important thing is really the mindset. Think of the bug report like asking for a favor, a favor from a volunteer uh, that you want to help you. That's really, if you have that in mind, you're not 
dealing with, you didn't buy anything and now can can demand that it's getting fixed because you didn't get what you were promised for your money because uh, Linux is done by volunteers. So you really have to do your share of the job and uh, make it easy for others to help you. And then most of the time, um, uh, if you're kind, you will be helped because uh, the current developers have really a big, good, good, strong interest in making uh, everything work. Yeah, and that's why a decent report is so important and um, also uh, in your own interest to get it fixed. Yeah. The reporting issues document in the kernel explains how, how to do that. Uh, it, among others, yeah, tells you how to submit the report to the appropriate place, which as I said, that's something a lot of people get wrong when they follow the bugs in bugzilla.org and they get ignored there. Uh, it's really uh, sad to see. Hopefully uh, the situation there will improve soon. There are some ideas to, to, to make it work better. Another thing you sh also should, uh, uh, it's also important when you're, when you're compiling your report uh, is that, you sh that it should cover all aspects that are important for developers, but are still easy and quickly to grasp by everyone because yeah, everything else just makes it hard for them and that's a risk that they're getting ignored. And yeah, if you have, and um, if you deal with a severe issue or a regression, you really should make it obvious in the report, for example, by mentioning it in, in the subject uh, or with tech or something. But the most important things are really, uh, um, you should avoid any red, red flags by, by, by doing the following. You should really test and report with a kernel that's really fresh, so mainline, untainted, and vanilla and mention in your reports that you did so, because that's what most people do wrong. And that's the, that those are the, uh, mo, mo, the, the reasons why many bug reports sadly are ignored. Which actually brings me to the end and uh, questions. I hope you have questions. I hope I didn't uh, talk you into the ground and I hope my voice still works. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we have one question in the, uh, question and answer. Uh, when it when it can be reasonable to close existing report and open new one instead? So are we, if, um, is it a, a report you submitted yourself or somebody else? So uh, that that's related to some other thing. So assume there's a report by somebody else that was ignored and it looks to be about the same problem, then it might be a good idea to actually submit a totally new report and just pointing to the old report and mentioning um, that it uh, looks related but might or might not be. Um, because that gives you a fresh start and that often helps everybody um, uh, to avoid confusion. And sometimes bugs that look the same are actually different bugs uh, so if that's the case here, you also don't get, get sidetracked or and, and, uh, and uh, uh, two different bug, uh, bugs discussed in one third or one bugzilla ticket. That's totally confusing for everybody and that, that's um, really hard. If it's uh, a, 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 my, a risk that the bug is not getting fixed in the end. Uh, if it's a report you sent yourself, um, it's actually, um, and it was ignored for like one or two months, it's actually, uh, or, 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 or if it became complicated because others joined in and threw other information in there, and nobody uh, uh, can, can understand anything anymore, then it might also be a good idea to, to give it a fresh start. But what you really should, uh, what's really important there is, is linking to the old bug and mentioning, hey, we discussed this there already. I don't have any more questions in there. Could have talked for longer. Try to stay within the 45 minutes Part. Should I talk about regressions or Bacilla? Was anyone backstory of why Bacilla tickets are ignored? If anybody wonders, yeah, it uh, simply happened. There were a few people that thought having a bug tracker was, was a good idea, like maybe 20 years ago. 
but some of the kernel developers actually didn't want to uh, participate, and that's why some some middlemen were actually meant to help with uh, uh, looking at the bugs and forwarding it to the to the real maintainers that didn't want to bother with um, uh, uh, with a web based bug tracker. And um, uh, yeah, the thing is that with those volunteers, those middle uh, in between people uh, that never really worked on the scale, and the people that set up Bugzilla also moved on. And uh, many of the kernel developers um, stayed that way and didn't want to deal with it. And uh, but at the same time, some some such as actually started using Bugzilla, and that's why it couldn't be shut down at that point. And yeah, that's actually why why Bugzilla is still existing and still maintained um, to make sure they can use it. Um, and uh, as I said, there are, there's a plan to hopefully uh, improve the situation. Uh, there's some changes to Bugzilla and hopefully uh, get more traction into the idea. And then uh, hopefully bugs uh, will be, be forwarded to the maintainers again in the near future. Um, I have been uh, following when you were, um, as appropriate, I have been putting links in, um, uh, Thorsten. Uh, LWN article, I also put the link in the chat. Uh, one more thing I can, um, I, I thought about is that I, you, you, pro, you covered this, I think, as a maintainer, um, uh, from my perspective, if, if uh, somebody reports a problem and then offers to stay engaged during the uh, fixing process and uh, offers to test, um, especially if it is uh, if it is something that I do not have hardware for, um, that motivates maintainers for sure. Um, and maintainers and authors, developers for sure, because then they go, okay, whatever we are fixing, um, there is somebody that's uh, offering to test it in their environment and telling us that it works. So stay staying engaged to the process and making um, efforts to help with the bug fixing process is helpful. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, what I meant in, in point 19. Really, the, submitting the report is not when it's finished. That's actually when the fun starts you. Uh, doing these things and helping with the fixing pro process uh, uh, was by showing that you're engaged and everything, yeah, that's really important. That's what most people forget. They, uh, they simply think submitting the bug report is enough and then the developers will handle it and then they don't show up anymore. There's also a recipe to get your bug report, uh, not really not, but if you don't uh, uh, do anything when, when people are, are uh, when developers ask questions, yeah, then the bug in the end won't like, uh, likely be fixed because somebody often has to test the fixes, as you say, yeah. And then what's in it for you, really, you will get it reported by and reported and tested by tags in the kernel. So there is something for um, uh, reporting bugs that you are getting in back. I don't know if that you mentioned that, but it's an incentive for a lot of people uh, you, to, you, yeah, to yeah, yeah. You participate. Get your, you get your name into the kernel sources and you get the bug fixed. That's also exactly. something <laughs> you likely want, yeah. So any other questions from anybody about any of the any of the information uh, presented here or anything else um, that you want to know about the kernel development process in general? Um, and then also bug fixing process and stable kernels, maybe um, anything else that you want to know? you are coming back to talk about um, regression specific uh, in a couple of months. So that's the plan, um, yeah. And and your work is also volunteer work, if I understand correctly. So we're all a lot of us are volunteers here doing the work. So. Yeah, it's a it's a mix. Um, for example, this reporting issues document in the kernel, I actually wrote that one two years ago. Uh, during a sabbatical, so I did it all in my free time, didn't get a, a, a dollar for it. Uh, these days, the regression tracking, I get some support there, and that also helps a lot. Um, um, uh, but things like these are, yeah, they are related to that. But yeah, but in the end, I'm here on, on my own time. And because I think um, um, teaching people how to, to, uh, to do proper bug, to, uh, how to report bugs properly is something uh, that's needed because I see 
bad bug reports all the time that get ignored. And uh, um, if we really want to, to um, get rid of regressions also and all the bugs that, that, that show up, or, and, uh, then we need to enable more people to, to report it. It will, will never be, be perfect, and uh, there will always be uh, flaws in reports, that, but that's not, not a problem. This, uh, the developers are humans on the other side. They can live with, with a flaw or two, at least if it's not something really, really bad, like using a long-term kernel or something, or um, uh, a tainted kernel with the NVIDIA drivers, then your bug reports is likely is ignored. But if you forget something in the description, that's uh, that's not a problem. The developer will simply ask, can you send me this and that? And uh, then things will uh, work out in the end if you stay engaged as, as reporter. There is one question um, in the a chat. Um, somebody, Anup Parikh, um, uh, is wanting to know, how to get involved uh, with the bugzilla and the process that was just described. How do I get started? I know I think what would help um, us would be um, in what capacity are you looking to get engaged in the bugzilla process? Um, person, you can go ahead and, and answer that question. If you need more information, Anup can provide. Yeah, the bugzilla situation, in the end, what Baxilla needs is really people that know a lot about the kernel, uh, but are also willing to uh, look at bug reports and uh, check check um, if if they have any of the flaws I, uh, I I mentioned, and actually tell users to to improve their reports. And when when they are really good reports, then forwarding them to the right people because that needs knowledge about the kernel. Uh, so you um, uh, and those people are likely hard to find, but uh, maybe we need to teach them. Um, but the thing is, uh, there are some some infrastructure changes planned by Constantine, who's uh, the admin for kernel.org and Bacilla and his team. He uh, tries to to uh, do some changes to keep the um, the subsystem list in sync and these things. Um, I don't know how far he got with that. Uh, it's something that will likely happen over the next few months, and I guess at that point he will, he or somebody else will look, out, send out a, a request for help by people that that want to help here, uh, help others here re uh, writing good bug reports and making the kernel better. In other words, I think um, support, um, looking at the playing the role of a support engineer in some ways, right? Looking at the bug reports and say if they are filed correctly and uh, try to get the information from the reporter and then yeah, making the right stuff. connections. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, also, also checking if everything is there, if something is missing, that's really important, yeah. Uh, kind of first level support that checks checks for, for obvious problems before uh, uh, handing, handing the problem over to the second level support with, to people with more knowledge. Don't be shy. Ask questions. Yes. And my voice still still is working. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, Thorsten. Uh, this effort that you started um, uh, is um, this has been immensely helpful for the kernel community. That's one of the reasons I have I wanted you to come in and talk about your uh, this particular topic. Uh, so that we can make it widely available, even to new developers as they are aspiring developers and then as they can, yeah. as they're yeah, thinking yeah. about getting involved. It's, yeah, All, um, it's something even experienced kernel developers sometimes get, get things wrong, wrong. Even they sometimes report bugs in uh, bugzilla.kernel.org and they get ignored there or, uh, um, and uh, because even some kernel developers are not, not, um, I'm not uh, uh, aware that some bugs are report uh, are not there. The thing is, uh, if somebody is interested in, in this topic and wants to help, maybe looking at the reporting issues uh, documented in the kernel and uh, uh, looking at it with fresh eyes and uh, uh, and giving me feedback how how to improve it and make things even easier for for people to 
to to understand that would be something that that uh, is also something uh, somebody could could work on to to make this even even uh, better or if somebody is interested in writing a script to actually submit bug reports uh, that actually uh, codifies some of the things um, uh, I outlined in this talk. So if, if you could, for example, uh, what 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 I have in mind is some some some, some small web app or Python uh, application uh, that uh, helps you compile a report that actually checks for things I mentioned, like is the kernel tainted, is it the latest version, and uh, that actually guides you through the uh, through. Uh, Creating a good reports that's also something that that would be great to have uh, if somebody uh, looks for for a fun project to write. That is a great idea. Um, um, gathering up it could even be a shell script gathering up all the information you need from a DNS message. It could or... be a shell script, but I think it's it's a little bit more complicated. Some some more guidance might be good, but yeah, it could be a shell, shell script. I, I'm I'm thinking of something. That works locally and on the web easily because mm -hmm. that otherwise you have uh, there, there will always be people that want to do it on a command line or with the GUI and there are always people that want to do it on the web and uh, so either we you have only uh, one code base to for these two things uh, uh, that's at least what I think would be helpful here. Great, that's a good idea. So if anybody is looking for a project um, to do, fun project to do in the audience. Um, hey, you have an idea there. Any other questions? Maybe everybody is reporting, uh, is reading reporting issues in the kernel sources because yeah. that could answer nearly everything. Uh, that's also why it's quite long. Uh, it looks a bit scary, but I, I really try to write it that to make it not scary. I put all those links in the uh, chat. So yeah, you can uh, review that and admin guide under documentation admin gui guide is yeah. where you will see a bunch of that information. And there are scripts. Um, I think there is a kernel taint uh, script under tools debugging, yeah. I think that, that, will... that can be run. Yeah, that will decode the field and actually explain you uh, uh, explain what why the kernel is tainted because it yeah, actually can be multiple issues. That's uh, the script helps there. Yeah. Pretty scary, scary uh, um, uh, bash code actually. Right, um, and then there are uh, the the decode uh, stack trace is under main uh, scripts under the main uh, uh, directory. Um, yeah, I always wondered why uh, kernel check check taint is under debugging because uh, probably belonged more under the main scripts but um looks like that's where it is right now yeah debugging. scripts is a directory where scripts for kernel developers and scripts for users um are, are mixed up maybe th that script should actually move move be moved to the tools directory so it, the distributions actually install that mm. Oh, yes. Okay. So you mean that even the decoding stack trace could also yeah. move yeah. under tools? Yeah. Maybe. I mean, this, uh, for the decoding, you need to debug info symbols, and um, but you don't need the sources anymore. So, so if the script should be available uh, there for regular users as well. And uh, maybe having it in the script directory is not the best, best idea, but in the end, it doesn't matter that but people that get that far are likely able to, to handle that. Mm -hmm. And somebody was asking earlier, how can I tell if I have um, a, a kernel that uh, has gone through modifications? I think taint does help. Um, your thoughts on that, um, Thorsten? I answered it saying that you could run uname a to get the build date and sources and so on, but maybe you can uh, um, add basically, your thoughts. Basically, if the documentation for the kernel doesn't say uh, that it's vanilla, it most likely was modified and, and enhanced. There are a few kernels, uh, especially those kinds of distributions, um, um, uh, most of the time uh, are modified. 
Um, but there are a few, few gray areas there. There are, for example, the Arch Linux, Fedora, and OpenSUSE Tumbleweed kernels. Um, they follow they follow um, uh, the latest stable series quite closely, and they don't modify uh, their kernels much. So with those, you actually um, um, you can't see that uh, that they are vanilla, and um, they are strictly speaking also are not vanilla. But they might, uh, nevertheless, for many bugs, uh, are, are good enough. The problem with those kernels is actually, yeah, that those are the start, stable kernels, and you normally want to uh, install a vanilla uh, uh, the, the latest mainline kernel at least ideally. And um, so um, maybe you should look out for a repository that actually ships the the vanilla latest vanilla mainline kernel. And I'm, I'm pretty sure there is one for Arch Linux. For Fedora, I'm maintaining such a repository myself. And for OpenSUSE, there's also uh, uh, um, something in the uh, open build service where you always can easily install RPMs or packages um, with the latest mainline kernel uh, in a vanilla form, which actually most of the time they have actually vanilla somewhere in the name to indicate that they are vanilla. And uh, those are uh, uh, good enough to report back, uh, 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 a bug it's totally fine just be aware that sometimes you uh, later uh, for testing might need to compile your uh, uh, kernel anyway um, to do that i actually have um, uh, documentation written up uh, not yet submitted uh, that uh, hopefully uh, will help users in that regard as well to handle that task better in the future any other question <laughs> is not not that hard it sounds hard but uh, it's if you don't go the complicated way it's it's relatively easy for for people that know know their way around uh, linux and the command line yeah it is um, rather easy to build the kernel and then uh, uh, running your latest kernel i always run i'm running rc8 right now on on this laptop that i'm yeah. running zoom so um and, and and they are not dangerous uh, as you no. sometimes sometimes uh, every two or three years sometimes has a as a not that nice bug but most of the time they are really as stable as stable kernels or uh, sometimes i think they are more stable because that's what all the kernel developers use and that's where all the testing goes so sometimes i have the impression that those mainline rc kernels are more stable than than the latest stable kernels that is correct. Yeah, I that's that's why I don't run any distro kernels. Usually, I am always running on my primary laptop. I run not. I am running RC8 and yeah, like, yeah I'm, I'm doing the same. And then also you kind of help out. You uh, sometimes what happens is something that might show up as a problem for you. Uh, you are on top of uh, finding it quickly and getting that fixed in the release that is currently being integrated and paid attention to. So there are benefits to the users as well by staying with the main line. Um, and you're yeah. participating in the process as a result. And I, I mean, Thorsten and I, am, I are vested <laughs> because we are part of the community, but even for others. So that would be yeah. helpful. It's, it's a good way to give something back to him. I mean, you get a really complex piece of software for free. And uh, by helping testing it, uh, by using pre-compiled kernels from a package or something, or compiling a regular compiling mainline kernels yourself, you really uh, are in a, have the opportunity to give something back to the developers and help the world getting a bit, bit better and prevent others from running into, into problems. So it's a good way to give something back. back. Um, okay, so I don't have the impression that the latest kernel RCs are also that stable for embedded devices. Yes, embedded space is a little bit different. Do you have any comments on that, Dustin? Yeah. To be honest, I'm not that, uh, I'm, I'm more from the PC space and not from the embedded space. Um, that, but from the reports I see, it's true. But that's also uh, the reason for that is that most of the embedded people don't run RC kernels, so and are a lot of behind. So ignore the the, the packages uh, from the base uh, from the uh, soft providers that are, are years old. Even if you run mainline on it, uh, later stable kernel that's uh, often um, uh, 
bit of problematic because so people so few people do that because the, there are so many embedded boards out there that would really be helpful if, if each embedded uh, board had like uh, yeah, two or three people that regularly run mainline on it and uh, if they report problems in time uh, yeah then those, those problems would vanish but if they pile up uh, over two or three releases and then you try to to uh, go to the next mainline release um uh, then then it gets complicated because these problems are, are mixed in and uh, finding the root cause uh, is, is hard so uh, what the embedded people really need to do is uh, increase the te their testing uh, things there mm -hmm. yes absolutely um so uh, when i worked for um, companies that relied on uh, embedded as their development platform and a deployment platform um, there was an effort to i used to run um, uh, latest RCs on those to find the problems and then also test strings a lot of our test strings do have a lot of embedded boards boards in them so we do keep finding problems like for example Linaro has uh, a test string that has uh, several embedded uh, things and kernel ci has them um, so we do keep up on those um, testing and finding problems it is not as unstable as people think because if you look watch the stable kernel mailing uh, stable release mailing list all of those are tested on a, a rings that are have several pieces of embedded hardware in them so it's just a matter of checking and uh, looking at it and then also play with it yourself and see um see how they fare and you can um you can report problems yeah. the important thing is, uh, is also is, uh if you help testing mainlines then then the um, um, errors uh, the, the problems that were introduced uh, that those were introduced recently that makes it a lot easier to fix them um, if the, um, and especially when it comes to regressions because um uh, if they only pound after one year or something then uh, something else uh, that then you can't remove the the, the culprit that is causing the, the regression the change that's uh, causing it so easily anymore because it might cause a regression for other people that's that's also why testing the main, latest mainline is helpful for everybody if you are on a, on a on a on a rare platform for example one that isn't used in your in those test labs you mentioned yeah because there are so many embedded bots out there bisect becomes easier if you're kind of um if it's close you're closer to yeah. the introduction that's also, point yeah um, there is one more. I think it's not so easy to produce a vanilla kernel for embedded hardware. Typically, you use some build root environment around it, and then that is not vanilla anymore. You are right that I play with, I use uh, Raps Ra Raspberry Pis um, and other embedded uh, devices um, for testing. And for some projects, I have used it in the past, and I continue to use. It is uh, difficult in some ways to deploy a mainline kernel on on uh, on embedded devices however many mainline uh, embedded uh, device maintainers what they do is they keep integrating mainline changes into um, into their git what i would recommend is check their git raspberry pi maintains their git for example or um, other similarly other uh, vendors they will have a git um, that they keep on updating it and keep it very current so you can download that git and build that one and it will be close to mainline uh, because they will add they might not have mainlined some of their uh, specific changes hardware driver changes maybe perhaps so what they do is they'll uh, maintain a separate git for things that they haven't so that's the closest you can get to mainline yeah yeah that's that's a good advice for, for those all those embedded ones yeah and then i also keep multiple um, um micro sd cards because i keep swapping them out um the, when i do uh testing on raspberry pis because i'll keep a distro one so I can just recover from it. And then I'll, I also keep the separate one for mainline upstream testing. So. Yeah. To be, to, 
as I said, on my regular laptop, I, I use our sequence all the time. And I think I had now five or six uh, mainline cycles where I didn't have any problem with uh, mainline. Just this cycle, that, that was one where I had actually two bad problems uh, that affected my machine. But uh, often using mainline on PCs just works totally fine. Yes, laptop. Yeah, I don't um, may, um, usually not a problem. Desktop and um, yeah. not a problem at all. So that made for a good discussion. Uh, any more questions? We talked everybody to the ground. <laughs> oh, it's too early in the US and in Europe. Everybody has a long day already. There are no questions. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Looks like thank you for coming in. So I guess. Um, and uh, hope you enjoyed everything. And we can hand it back to Candace for closing. Thank you both so much for your time today, and thank you everyone for joining us. As a reminder, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today, and a copy of the presentation slides will be added to the Linux Foundation website. We hope you are able to join us for future mentorship sessions. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.